Okay. Um, the board looks good behind me on the screen, right? We can see it all. We're good. There's always a glare. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with number one. We're subtracting decimals. Um, when you subtract decimals or add, they need to be lined up, right? I already did it for you on these ones, but sometimes uh, on the next one it's not lined up for you. So hopefully you line those up. So can I take three minus nine? No. What do I need to do first? Borrow from the two. What does the two become? A one. And the three becomes? 13. What is 13 minus 9? Um, 4. Good. Can I do 1 minus 5? Nope. What do I got to do? Take from the 5. What does the 5 become? A 4. What does this 1 become? 11. What's 11 minus 5? 6. Always drop down your decimal. Good. And can I do 4 minus 2? Yep. What is it? 2. And 8 minus Seven is one. Good. Good job. All right, so do our borrowing. Trust. Um, you can do all the borrowing at once if you want to. It's up to you. Um, that's that's up to you. However, you feel comfortable doing that. Number two, we're adding. Oh, is it nine and three again? I just made these up on the spot. What is nine plus three? Um, Not fourteen. Nine plus three is twelve. So we drop our two, carry the one. What is six plus four? Ten plus one is eleven. Carry your one. Bring down your decimal. Don't forget. What is five plus four? Nine plus one is ten. Carry your one. Remember to listen to the questions I'm asking you. Don't just write answers. What is one plus two? Three plus one? Four. Forty dollars? Well. I didn't put money, but 40 and 1200 or $40 and 12 cents because we are going to work with money today. So that's why we have only two decimal places. Because are you ever going to see something that's $1 and 578,000? No. no. So we're going to work with money, which would just be two decimal places. Yeah, you would have to move the decimal, right? The next one. Because we're going to do this a little bit today, add decimals and subtract from them with discounts and things like that. So let's start by adding. What do I have to do with these to add? Add. Well, yes, but before I can just add, what do I have to do? Line the decimals up. I line them up. 24.75 plus 17.92. Then we can add. 2 plus 5? 7. Okay. 7 plus 9? 16. Carry 1. Always drop down your decimal. What is 4 plus 7? Twelve. Nope. 4 plus 7 is? 11. 11 carry, uh, plus 1? 12. Carry your 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1? 2. 4. Three. 4. Yeah, sorry. I did that one differently. So we add 42 to 67. Then what's the next step? Subtract. Subtract $10. So I do it like this? Nope. Why not? That's subtract the 10. Decimals again. Yeah, we need to line up our decimals. If our decimals here, ten dollars looks like that. You got to make sure your decimals are lined up, or you're going to get the wrong answers, right? So this one, seven minus zero, six minus zero, decimal, two minus zero is, and four minus one, three, thirty-two sixty-seven. So a problem like this would be you buy two things and then you are you're at Walmart. I don't know. You're at no, it's too cold. I like cold. You're at cold. And you buy two things, twenty-four dollars seventy-five cents, and the other thing is seventeen dollars ninety-two cents. That adds up to forty-two sixty-seven, but you have a coupon for ten dollars off. So your total cost is actually thirty-two sixty-seven, right? This is the type of things that you're gonna see in the real world all the time. Especially if you want to save money and you're getting all of those people. Yeah, it's Split your rent or you split the bill. There's all kinds of 
if you come back and use it the next time you come back. So they make you come back to spend more money. <laughs> you always need things. Okay. So what we're going to do is split into groups. So we're going to have a group that has some online kids and then you five on, on the far end are going to be with the online kids. You don't need to stay on the Google Meet. You're just going to move with Ms. Daphne and she'll take the computer when it gets to that point. You guys over here are going to be in person with me first. So, yeah, so Ms. Daphne is going to do the reading portion of this assignment today. It's There's four slides total. Um, the first two are reading about Black Friday, learning about Black Friday. The last two slides are math related and doing the adding, subtracting, discounts, and all that stuff. Yoshi, stop. So, well, uh, I think I'll do the online one first so these five will come over here just because i have it set up on here i don't know if we have time well we might have time let's just do that because yeah we'll do that instead yeah because then they can read about it first before math okay i lied miss daphne is going to just teach first um everybody has the assignment so go over to google classroom please Speaking of phenomenal business ideas, Black Friday. Oh my gosh, Black Friday makes they so make, much money. I also heard from when I used to work at Walmart, uh, a lot of these companies like Walmart, Kohl's, Target, Best Buy, they have specially made items for Black Friday. So like those big TVs that you get are like specially made for Black Friday. So they're not great quality. So they're not losing a ton of money on those deals. Yes, Charlie. Oh, Yes. Okay. What we're gonna do is um everybody needs to scroll down to math and open up the Brat Brat Black Friday math. It's a set of Google Slides. I'm gonna have it on here so it's up there too. Does that work for you? So uh go ahead and get that open up. You guys got about one minute to get it open and prepared, and then Miss Daphne is gonna go for it and do her teaching stuff. Get zoomed in on it as you need to. Um, 50 is not too bad. 100 is going to be really far. I know, I need all of them. Wait, what are you counting it? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead um, and get that opened up. And then Ms. Brassini will get going. All right, just give me a thumbs up when you are there so I know that you all are confirming through verbal means that you are ready. We're doing just the basics first. We're not going to double check it. What if someone makes a film? Just to do the basics. Just the basics, yeah. Alright. Why can't it be Cyber Monday? Alright, we'll just do Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday is where I'll be for Cyber Monday. Okay, cool. I'm not on the back of my Yes. Alright, so as Ms. Jones told you guys, we have two reading, two math slides. So we're going to get started with the reading. For the first one, it's just the basics. It's a pretty short one. So I want to hear everybody reading it with me. I don't want to hear you guys screaming. I don't want you guys silent. I want everybody participating, reading the same words that I'm reading because you guys all need to be engaged. So we all have some sort of background knowledge and experience with Black Friday. So let's go ahead and read just the basics. Are you guys ready? Oh, I hear everybody read. Okay. Black Friday is the Friday after Thanksgiving. What? I don't hear anybody. Oh, reading has a number. I, I was. You're teaching it though. I should hear all of you reading it. Yeah, I don't have to teach lovely. how to read. But yeah, but Miss Jones did not keep so silent when she. Oh talking. wait, Miss Jones isn't cute. Yeah, We're gonna read it all read together. Black Friday is the Friday after Thanksgiving Day, and it is usually considered the beginning of the holiday shopping season. I 
still don't hear very many people. Black Friday is known for smashing deals with stores dropping prices in their stores for one day only. Many shoppers spend Thanksgiving perusing advertisements in the newspapers to decide which deals are the biggest and the best. Stores create catchy commercials and other marketing campaigns. If I don't hear you guys, I'm just going to call on random people. So, how about all of you agree? Stores create catchy commercials and other marketing campaigns. I have no idea where they're to encourage people to start their holiday shopping on Black Friday. Since 2005, Black Friday has been the busiest shopping day of the year with crowds at major stores soaring. Lines even extend outdoors and around buildings. Some people even camp out to be first in line to snag a great deal. All right, now, Yoshi, read what number one says, please. Yep, number one. Okay, list two facts. What is the difference between a fact and opinion? Who can raise their hand and tell me what the difference between a fact and an opinion is? Dallin. Good. A fact is a very solid statement. There is evidence to support it. You can't argue it one way or another. But an opinion is just how somebody feels about something. Everybody might have a different opinion. So who can give me one fact from the article that we just read? Charlie, give me a fact. Okay, so you guys are going to click on there. Black Friday is the biggest selling day of the year. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because it is so tiny. The biggest selling day of the year. There you go. Okay. That's one fact. Who can give us another fact? Alani, I saw your hand up. But now you're like doing something weird with it. I got one. What's a fact? Nope. Okay. People sometimes camp out for Black Friday deals. Okay. Were there only those two facts in the passage? There were way more. So those are two that I'm going to put. Does anybody have another fact that they want to share that they thought was interesting? Okay, so since 2005, Black Friday has been the busiest shopping day of the year. Good. So that's kind of like what Charlie said in the beginning, but it's interesting that it's been since 2005. Who can do the math and tell me how many years ago 2005 was? 16. 16 years ago. Oh my gosh. I remember when Black Friday started to become a big deal, but you like went at 6 a.m. that day. Stores didn't open like the night before or like 3 a.m. or online. Like it was very much like somewhat normal times and experiences compared to now. People have gotten so much crazier. I'm so sorry, guys. It used to be like a normal, like good intended, like get some cheap stuff. Now it's just too crazy. I don't go. All right. Uh, Juliana, will you read number two, please? All right. So it gave us some pretty exciting descriptive words or adjectives, probably to spice things up a little bit, make it more interesting to read. So, Dallin, you found one? That's not a descriptive word, and we can't get much more boring than that. <laughs> Deal. Deal, that's not a descriptive word. Deal is a noun. So I am looking at Black Friday is known for its smashing deals. So I'm going to add a circle over the word smashing. 
Smashing is describing the deals in an exciting or more interesting way. What is a more boring word for smashing? Solani? Good. Okay, good. That's exactly what it means in that context. So good. Okay, so that was one descriptive word. Catchy. Okay, I like catchy. Stores create catchy commercials. So instead of catchy, what could we put there? Well, good commercials. What is catchy about them? What do they mean by catchy, Char? Huh? We'll get there. Stories create hooked commercials. Hooked is a verb, though. We need it as an adjective. If something is catchy, like think of all the catchy songs on the radio that you can't get out of your head. What is what does it mean to be catchy? Okay, so to make catchy a little bit more boring, we could say interesting commercials. They're interesting, they're fun to watch, but if they're catchy, it makes us want to keep watching or it sucks us in where we go spend all these money. Charles? Per per you perusing? Where's that? Many shops. Okay, so that's another verb. They spend Thanksgiving perusing advertisements. Does anybody else have any descriptive words or adjectives? That's another verb. So ed or ing words are typically verbs. It wants an adjective. Okay, where do you find the word great? On the bottom. To snag a great deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a circle around great. Okay, what's another word for great? That would be even more exciting than great. We need a boring way. Good. Because if this if this passage just said good, 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 interesting, that's more plain and a little bit more boring to read. But when it talks about the smashing deals and the catchy commercials, it's not oh, that was interesting. Well, good, interesting, and good. See how boring our answers already are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to number three. Jada, will you read number three? Peruse. So I hear a lot of us mixing up pursue, which is to like go after or follow somebody or follow something, like to pursue a career. Peruse has the S and the U switched, so you guys need to really be careful with words like that. Mm. Yeah, it, English is one of those weird languages where we just have different words for different words. Is it Peru? Yeah. You just give them the answer. I didn't realize that was Thank you. So many shoppers spend Thanksgiving perusing advertisements in the newspapers. So what's the definition for the word to find or to look? To find or to look at. All right, and number four, Skylar, read number four, please. Underline the sentence that provides. Provides. Evidence. Evidence. All right. So you need to underline. Do we all know how to underline? 
you can either take it or you can copy and paste it. What sentence stands out to tell us about the large crowds at the stores? Some people camp out. Okay, so lines extend outdoors. Some people even camp out to be first in line. I mean, the camping out kind of infers that they stay overnight, so they don't have to wake up early. They want to make sure that they're first. I know when the iPhones first started coming out, it was like the iPhone 1, before we had 20 different models. That was like a big sell item where people would take their tents and camp out on the sidewalk in front of the cell phone store the night before because it was before it was such a popular item, but they knew it was going to sell big. So they wanted to be like one of the first people with that phone. So you would, and you still do have people that literally camp out. But as we saw like trends and different patterns of behavior, like Black Friday after Black Friday, now they've extended their offers. So Black Friday is not just a Friday anymore. It's not just like special hours. Sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's at the store and online. So they've kind of switched things up. All right, let's go to slide number two. I'm gonna let Ms. Jones do slide two. Oh, well, you can teach slide two and then I'll do three. And then you do. Oh, come on, let's switch things up. Keeps things fun. I made them all read with me for slide number one, so you should probably do the same. Because no, no, um, nobody wanted to read, and it was pulling teeth. So I think they should all read because they didn't have the All right. All right, slide number two. So same sort of stuff that we're going to do. Is it the same headline every year? Earlier and earlier. Yeah, earlier. okay. Earlier, earlier, and earlier. Earlier, earlier, earlier. It's not like Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to call people to read a paragraph at a time. That's all right. Charlie, read the first paragraph, Charlie. Okay, it's all, all one paragraph, so we're going to have someone else read now. Volunteers, or do I get to call on someone? Oh, all right, Donna, keep going. Friday evening. Uh, it began. It began with a late night opening time of 8 p.m., but, yeah. but year after year, the time the stores open up continues to keep up. Uh, one more person to finish it out for us. Jada, go ahead. Nice and loud so the online kids can hear you. So sometimes stores offer. All right. Have any of you guys ever been Black Friday shopping? No. no? 
You got trampled? Okay. That's not fun. I don't usually go. It's like um, it's like Toy Story 2 where everyone runs in the door. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. All right, so let's start with number one. Yoshi, read number one for us. What does it say? All right. Raise your hand. What's the answer to that? Why did stores begin opening earlier? Go ahead, Yoshi. Because they wanted people to show up bright and early, but why? Because they give good deals. They want people to spend all those are good reasons, right? So they open earlier because. Where does it say it though? I know, but where's my answer that I'm looking for? There we go. Stores want shoppers. Yeah, because they want shoppers to have more time. More time to do what? To spend their money. What is what? Moolah? Yeah. All right, so what was yours? But they give great deals because they want people to spend their money and they want people to come. Okay. Just write this. We'll add on to it. They give great deals because they want what? I think I like Cyber Monday better than Black Friday because I don't have to leave my house to do Cyber Monday. Oh, Prime Day is good too. I like Prime Day. Prime Day is when Amazon does a huge discount on all of their stuff, basically. Well, they don't do free stuff at Amazon. I've seen things for one cent and then the shipping is like $10. It was free though, so the shipping was free and everything. That's lucky. All right, um, let's see. Number two, Kaylin, will you read number two for us? All right, so we got people that think that it's not a good idea to be open on Thanksgiving. Bradford, do you know where the reason is? Where is it at? Where do you see that? In the bottom? Thanksgiving is a time spent with family. Good. So let's go ahead and move that line. Um, I don't know if they had Black Friday or not. I don't know. That's true. I just made two lines, copy and paste. So Thanksgiving is a time spent with family. So people are not a fan of it because you're supposed to be having Thanksgiving dinner and cooking and, I don't know, playing football, watching football, the Thanksgiving Day Parade. But if stores are open and, and your family would rather go shopping than spend time with you, it's kind of sad. That's my dad right there. And I was like, Walmart, Target, someone's opening it. Once I was Yeah, see. The other thing about it is, let's say you have relatives that work at Walmart or Target or other things, and they're forced to work on Thanksgiving because they need so many employees for the fact that everybody is shopping. So then your family member that works for them isn't going to be able to spend Thanksgiving with you because they're forced to go to work on that day, which sucks too. Yeah, like I used to work at Walmart and I worked one Black Friday, and I think pretty much every single employee
there. <laughs> All right, let's look at number three. Number three says, I uh, will see who wants to read number three. Bradford, read number three for us. All right, when did the store start opening earlier? What What does it say? Oh, I heard a couple of different answers there. Where do we see our answers? 2011. Okay, 2011, the stores like Target, Kohl's, and Best Buy decided they would begin their Black Fridays before even Black Friday began. So 2011, I know we're writing full sentences. So stores started opening earlier in what year? 2011, good. Oh, we're a little bit off. It is still the 2000s, but what uh, doesn't say exactly which year. Yeah, 2005 was on the first slide, so I think the first one we just got down. But just in the early 2000s, some stores started. In the early 20s, like before 6 a.m. There we go. So it actually is that first sentence. Traditionally, black. Oh, okay. This thing is not very conducive. So. Uh, Black Friday shoppers have enjoyed early store openings beginning around 6 a.m. In the early 2000s, stores began pushing store opening times even earlier. So that would be earlier than 6 a.m. Cool. What was that? So, in the early 2000s, we'll go with that. Early. It's the early 2000s. Okay. What if it's Black Friday deals on cars? Cars? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not just big stores, it's big anything, yeah. Like, no, food doesn't usually go with uh, like grocery stores and fast food restaurants and restaurants in general don't usually do Black Friday. It's more big retail stores or even the smaller stores. Or Home, Home Depot. Home Depot definitely has Black Friday. <laughs> Safeway is a grocery store, so no, it does not. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, last reading question. Um, Yoshi, read that to us. Number four. All right. This is your opinion. Um, I want two sentences based on what we read. How do you feel about stores opening on Thanksgiving Day? Two sentences, please. Nope, two sentences. What are your thoughts on? Okay, right. that was my dad next door. So can I just see like hands? Because I'm just curious. Um, who is in favor or thinks it's a good thing for stores to open on Thanksgiving? Missions. Yeah. I'm done with all of them. You finished all four slides? Mm hmm. Okay, well, I guess Trinidad didn't head out, but we're going to do it as a class next. So. Okay, yeah. right. two more minutes, and then we're going to let Miss Dawson and I work with you guys on slide number three. We'll probably have to finish it tomorrow. Well, actually, we'll just get as far as Miss Dawson and I get, and then we'll turn it in. No, we'll just do as much as we can today and then we'll turn it in. I literally just said one to two sentences and you got about one minute because this often is going to get going on the third slide because what? I don't even know why they call it Black Friday if it's on Thursdays now. It's, sometimes it starts Thursdays. 
Some places it starts on Wednesday. It's Cyber Friday. I'm Black Monday. It's Cyber Monday. Okay, at first I thought Black Friday was when all the lights were turned off. Because that's when they have the sale. Yeah, yeah. Black Friday is Black Friday. Alright, let's move on. Yay. Yay. Now we're using all this Black Friday fun stuff for the math. And as we said, you're going to see math everywhere, especially with decimals. So we have a sample of a receipt from Black Friday shopping at Toys R Us, or Toys for Us. I know, but Toys R Us just doesn't exist anymore, I'm sad. It was bankrupt. Anyway, this was from November. Yoshi, you ready? Or do you want to do a spring lunch? I got time. All right, so we have the first item is a Skylander trap team for $74.99. The discount subtracted was $37.49. So we need the sale price. How are we going to solve for the sale price? Subtract. Subtract. So Steve was nice and set it up for us. And it has the decimals lined up. 37. All right, somebody walk me through step by step. How do I subtract these two prices? Thank you, Charlie. Good. No. Okay, so the new price would be thirty-seven fifty. Can anybody take kind of a rough guess how what percentage off was the item? Huh? Nope. Fifty percent. It was half off. They took off thirty-seven forty-nine and they paid thirty-seven fifty, so it's half off. Sometimes it's like super super clearance. They're like, this has been on the hanger for two years. Please take it. All right, next one. Thirty four ninety nine minus seventeen forty nine. All right. I've got a ninety cents. Ninety cents. Thirty four. All right. Somebody walk me through the next one. Okay, let's hear. It. Oh, you just did the last one. <laughs> okay. Somebody that I have not heard from. I read. Alex. Alex. Can you do it? You know what we do? Is he no, we just say it. It's not huge. Okay, walk me through the math. Yes, you do. Can I do it? 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 No. No, I did not call on anybody else. I called on Alex. What's nine minus nine? Zero. Okay, can I do nine minus four? Yeah. And get what? Five. Can I do four take away seven? No, so I've got to borrow from the three. 14 minus 7? No. 7, because 7 is half of 14. I see where you got your 2. And 2 minus 1? One. 1. Bring my decimal down. 17.50. So again, it looks like it was about 50% off. Oh, the next one's only 50% off. They look like they're all about 50% off. I. I'm going to move on. It seems like you guys got the hang of this side. I want to look at the next side before I just let you guys loose. On slide three. So on slide three, we have, no, 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 this is all wrong. That beach ball should be $9.99 less than the sweater, which is supposed to be $8.50 cheaper than what is marked. The purse is priced way too high. It is only double the price of the sweater's sales price. 
hurry and fix the tags before the customers come in. So we've got kind of, oh, sounds like a little bit of a mess. All right, so somebody mixed up the tags on all the items. Which item can we figure out first? Which one do we have the most information on? On the purse? So the purse is priced too high. It's double the price of the sweaters. Do we know the price of the sweater? No. The beach ball is $9.99 less than the sweater, but the sweater is supposed to be $8.50 cheaper than what is marked. So we have the sweater is $24.19. It needs to be $8.50 cheaper. Don't call out. Who can tell me what I need to do with $24.19 and $8.50? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Okay, who can confidently raise their hand and tell me which operation we're using and why? Charlie. Kaylin, I heard you say it. Why is it subtraction? If it's cheaper, am I going to spend more than $24? No, I'm going to spend less than $24.19. So we're going to set up the subtracting decimal problem with that $24.19 and the $8.50. Where would I put the $8.50? The bottom, how? But eight under the four, and then 50. Okay, I want you guys to subtract this on your boards, solve it, and raise your hand when you have an answer 2419 minus 850. Okay, I'm gonna give everybody a second to figure it out. I don't see like more than three hands this time. You guys are bumming me out. I'm trying to do it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, give us about 30 more seconds. All right, Jada, walk me through it. Nine minus zero is nine. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, good job. All right. So instead of 24.19, the sweater is 15.69. So now, based on our sweater price, we can solve for the beach ball and for the purse. Who can tell me what information I need now to solve for the price of the beach ball? Other than Charlie. Why? Okay. So we have fifteen sixty nine minus nine ninety nine. It is that much less than the actual price of the sweater. So go ahead, solve this one. Let me know when you have an answer. I want to see answers written on your board. I'm going to come through, check those answers, and then I will, me or Miss Jones will let you move on to the third and last part. Thank you. 
Okay, guys, um, everybody in here and online, um, we have to go to lunch in a minute, but for your assignment, because this is a graded one, I know we did a lot of it together, but the fact that we did it together means that you should get a good grade on it, right? So well, let me finish my sentence, please. So um, I want you guys to finish slide number three. There are a couple other things that we didn't get to finish. You need to make sure you have the beach ball price as well as the price of the purse. And then over on the left side, we didn't finish all of the discounts and stuff. So you need to finish the sales price of the board game, the sales price of the headbands game, and then you need to find, uh, you have to do some adding. You need to find the total amount of all the regular prices, the total amount that you got discounted, and then the total amount that you would have spent at the end. So there's a lot of adding on that. But those things need to be finished, and then you can turn it in. I'm grading this slide for math slides one and two go in your reading grades so make sure slides one two and three are fully complete um if you want to try slide number four go for it but i'm not going to grade it um it's a little bit of a puzzle what that what times they open so you can try slide number four and figure out if you can or see if you can figure out what times these different stores open based on the conversation that happens up there but the slide that i am grading is slide one two and three Make sense? So you did I say you need to do four? No. No. It's just a fun one to try if you want to. So uh, those of you online can head out, and we will see you at 1230 for social studies today.